On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens blew its top, literally, killing 57 people and causing it the largest landslide in recorded history. But let's back up for just a minute. In March, there were a series of mini earthquakes followed by a mini eruption of steam and ash from the summit of the until then dormant volcano. Geologists rushed in to study the volcano and evacuation notices went out for the danger zone that was established around the mountain as many earthquakes and eruptions continued into April. A 400 meter wide crater grew at the summit of Mount St. Helens and magma building pressure under the surface caused the north flank of the volcano to bulge outwards. Meanwhile, local government officials responsible for implementing the danger zone near the mountain decided, under the influence of logging interests, to keep the danger zone small and allow logging of old growth forests near the mountain. If the mountain had exploded during the week rather than a Sunday, they would have all died. Geologists like David Johnston kept on doing critical observations that were crucial in keeping danger zones in place. Johnston worked close to the mountain, knowing full well that any day might be his last. Without his dedication and that of others to the work, the danger zone might well have been even smaller. Of course, even with geologists with the best intentions trying to save lives, there are always stubborn people. 83-year-old Harry Truman, owner of the Mount St. Helens Lodge, refused to budge. Since his wife had died, he closed down the lodge and lived there with approximately 16 cats. His favorite drink was whiskey and coke, and he liked to curse. A lot. When the sheriff showed up to convince him to leave, he said, I have lived here a long time and wouldn't last two weeks if I had to move to some apartment in Longview. This was probably followed by a lot of expletives. At 8.32 a.m. on May 18th, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake rocked the mountain, triggering the largest debris avalanche in recorded history. The northern bulge and the summit slid away in one enormous landslide, releasing the pressure that had been building up inside of the volcano. The total volume of the landslide was two and a half cubic kilometers. To put that in perspective, that's the equivalent of one million Olympic swimming pools. The pent up energy within the mountain exploded all at once, driving ash and debris upwards and outwards at 480 kilometers per hour. Harry Truman died immediately and his home was buried underneath 200 feet of debris. Observing from a ridge, David Johnston just had time to excitedly exclaim, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it, before his life was extinguished. 57 people died that day. An ash cloud of 520 million tons billowed up from the mountain and blew eastwards across the United States, falling as far east as Montana and the Great Plains. In only 15 days, it had circled the globe. A family of four was camping not far away, and when St. Helens exploded, they were trapped because fallen trees from the blast had blocked out the road. A passing helicopter picked them out. Worried about the weight of the copter, the rescue team yelled down, Leave the backpack! There's a baby in it! Okay, you can keep the baby. President Carter flew out later that week to see the aftermath. He looked out the window and said, Look at that incredible devastation. Oh no, Mr. President, that's just the clear cuts. We haven't gotten to the volcano yet, the head of the Forest Service replied, referring to the vast expanse of downed trees, the result of logging practices.